Hello programmers, welcome to the second video in collection framework series. In this video, we will talk about list interface and array list as its implementation. In our coding practice, we will see various functionalities which we can make use of as and when required. So without any further delay, let's start. What is list interface? List interface is a member of Java collection framework. It is available in java.util package and inherits the collection interface itself. It is an ordered collection also known as sequence. We have complete control over where in the list each element is inserted. We can access element by their index number or the position in the list and search the element based on that also. Duplicate and null elements are also allowed in list. It provides a special iterator called list iterator that allows element insertion, replacement, and bidirectional access in addition to the normal operations that a iterator interface provides. The implementation classes of list interface are array list, link list, stack, and vector. The array list and link list are the widely used implementations. Vector class was already deprecated since Java 5. It provides methods to search for specific object like contains and contains all. From the performance standpoint, these methods should be used with caution as in many implementations, they will perform costly for the linear searches. It also provides methods to efficiently insert and remove multiple elements at any arbitrary point in the list. In all the examples today, we will use ArrayList as the implementation of list interface. So let's understand ArrayList as well. What is ArrayList? It is a resizable array implementation of list interface. It implements all optional list operations and permits all elements including null insertion also. The class provides method to manipulate the size of underlying array also because internally ArrayList is also using uh, array in the backend to store the data. We can say this class is roughly equivalent to vector except that it is unsynchronized. That means it is not thread safe. So if you are using it in multi-threaded application, it must be synchronized externally. The iterators returned by the class iterator and list iterator methods are fail fast. So what exactly is fail fast? If the list is structurally modified at any time after the iterator is created, in any way other than that iterator's own remove or add methods. That means if we have already created an iterator on some of the list and any third party other than that iterator is trying to modify the list data, then the iterator will throw a concurrent modification exception. So those kind of iterators are known as fail fast iterators. Each array list instance has a specific capacity. The capacity is the size of array used to store the elements of the list. It is always at least as large as the size of the list. As elements are added to the array list, its capacity grows automatically. In array list, manipulation is little bit slow because a lot of shifting needs to uh, occur if any element is removed from the list. So if you need uh, your data structure where you will be manipulating the data a lot, then ArrayList may not be the ideal solution for you. ArrayList cannot be created for primitive types such as int, float, characters, but we can make use of the wrapper classes in such scenarios. Java collection framework was non-generic before JDK 1.5. Java new generic collection allows you to have only one type of object in a collection. In a way, now it is a type safe collection. So typecasting is not required uh, runtime while fetching the elements. Now enough with the theory. Now let's do some coding. Now let's see how we can declare a list. So for that, we can make use of this statement where list is referred as the interface name. And in these angle brackets, we need to specify what type of data we want to store in the list. This is the name of the reference. So as list is an interface, so we cannot instantiate it. So its implementation is array list as we have already discussed. So what we will do, we will instantiate it using array list. 
Now to add any element in the list, uh, dot add method is already provided. So here you can see names is the reference. So names dot add. And after that, we need to provide the string value because it only can contain string type of elements. If we try to add any other type of element, suppose we want to add integers in this, so it will give us a compilation error. So it is, it will give us a clear, concise message that method add in string is of type list string. So it is a, as it is using a generics and uh, it is type safe. So whatever type is defined while declaring the list, only that type of elements can be added. Let's try to create one more list of names too. So here I have added only a single element and let's try to print both the lists using CISO statement. So let me just save it and run the program. So here you can see the first list contains Mike and John and the second list contains Chris. If we want to add uh, two different lists together or append one list after another then list interface already provided a method called add on so in this the argument will be the list will which will be appended to the first list itself which is actually calling the add all method so after that the merge list element we are printing names so we are expecting the merge list should contain mike john and chris as well now let's try to execute and see the output so here you can see the merged list is Mike, John and Chris. So if we do it uh, in the reverse way, like names to calling add all method by passing names as an argument, then the list order will be Chris, Mike and John. Now suppose we have a standard uh, array of strings like this. So this is the standard Java array, not part of the collection framework lists. So if we want to convert this specific array to suppose list of strings, so how we can achieve? So there are two ways to do that. First one is we can have a for loop here uh, of the size of this array and one by one we can access it and add the element to the list. But there is one more way we have an arrays class present in java.util package with, which provides a lot of helpful functions. So by using as list method of arrays class, we can convert the standard Java array to the array list here. Now let's execute and see if we are able to uh, convert it properly. So yes, list converted from array is Java, Python and C++. Now let's see how we can iterate through the list if we want. Earlier we are able to print the whole list directly using its reference name. But what if we want to iterate one element at a time? So for that there are different ways. Uh, first let's check uh, the for loops. One is for each loop and other one is the standard for loop. So for each loop we have already seen. Uh, this is the syntax of for each loop. It will take names as a list as an input and one by one it will read. Uh, it will uh, read the element in name variable here so that we can make use of this variable and access the required element. So in this indexing is not used. So if we want to check a specific element at a specific <laughs> index for that this for loop is not useful. So to do that we have a standard for loop also. So here we can uh, make use of dot get method. So dot get method in the list will uh, require an index number as an input and in return it will uh, return the value present at that specific index in the list. Now let's see uh, how the output of uh, both of these loops. This should be same. So here you can see iterating using for each loop and the standard for loop that is same. As we have discussed in the theory part that uh, list has provided one list iterator. So now let's see what that list iterator is uh, using an example. So it is nothing but an iterator used to iterate through the list. Uh, there are two different iterators. One is the standard iterator which can go uh, in a single direction in the forward direction only. But list iterator specifically it can go both in forward as well as in backward direction. Now let's see what is that. So how to get the list iterator? So this first we need to create a simple list of names and I have added three names in that list. Now using list iterator, we can define it as list iterator, the type of uh, elements which will be there in this list, name of the iterator and after that list name dot list iterator. So this specific statement will return a list iterator which can be used to traverse through all the elements of names list. So now let's see how it will uh, work in a forward direction. So in this while loop, we are checking iterator dot has next. So it is checking whether uh, it will have a pointer uh, at the zero location and we'll see if it has any uh, next value or next available uh, data available. So 
uh, if it is true that means list has some more elements then it will print itr dot next so that means this will return the next value itself in the list which will be the first value at first point so after that uh, the pointer will be moved to the next position and again this while condition will be checked it will see if any other element which is next to that is present if yes then again that value will be printed and pointer will be moved further ahead so how it is backward so once it is iterated till the end and uh, there is no has next available so it is returning false that means it has reached the last element of uh, the list itself so at that point we can check iterator dot has previous so it will work same as has next but in opposite direction from last element to the first element so similarly as it will print uh, the list from backwards now let's try to execute this program as well so here you can see by forward we can see the list is maintaining the insertion order so first mike first element is mike second is john and third is steve so if we do a forward traversing mike john and steve and from the backward traversing we can see the order is reversed list has a number of methods available using which uh, any kind of list can be manipulated so let's just check the overview of them because we will not be able to demonstrate all of them so add we have already seen then we have add index so if you see if you use any uh, ide then you will have the complete uh, java documentation available here itself so i have just added uh, typed name dot and after that i have pressed control space so that is the shortcut for uh, um, eclipse so here you can see in the second one add index and element so what this will do this will add the provided string string element at the provided index itself so if we want to insert any element in between the list itself that also we can do otherwise the insertion order will be maintained then we have add all we have already seen this is used to append one list to the other list then again we have add all with the index so if we want to insert the other list at a specific location that can also be done next we have a dot clear method so this method is used to clear all the records from the list then we have two contains and contains all method these two methods are used to search any specific item in the list after that we have equals method this is used to check if uh, both the lists are uh, same that means both of the list have same elements and their order is also same uh, other than that we have a lot of uh, other methods as well like dot get we have seen this is uh, this will expect an index number and return the value present at that index then we have is empty so this specific method output in true or false so if the list is empty then it will return true otherwise false then we have iterator similar to the list iterator we can uh, get a standard iterator here then we have remove so remove have multiple variations like in one we can provide the index number so whatever value is present at that index that will be removed second one is uh, by providing the object itself so it will search the object and uh, if found then it will uh, remove that object from the list uh, similarly we have remove all so this will expect a collection as an input so what all elements are uh, provided in the input all those will be removed from the list then we have remove if so this works with the condition so predicate is required so a filter will be provided in that in the form of predicate and only uh, those elements will be removed which will satisfy the condition then we have few function to replace then we have uh, set method um, using which we can update the values of uh, existing elements then we have size method which will return the total number of elements present in the list we also have sort which will expect a comparator so that it can sort the list based on the comparator implementation we can also use stream on the list so this topic we will be covering mainly uh, when we will be discussing the java 8 features then we have a sublist if we want to cut a sublist out of the main list that can also be done then we have two array so similar to this like uh, all the methods what, whatever we have discussed in the introduction of collection framework so what all methods were there in the collection interface those have the implementation in array list so all of those can be used uh, as per our requirement that's it for this video so if you like the video please do like share and subscribe and in case of any suggestions please do comment thanks for watching see you next time